Hi. Okay, I'd like to talk about um, cannabis. So, like um, with cannabis, I think that it's the for the healing of the nations. I think that it's that's the solution. You know, it's it's the um, it's the tool that can be used to get us where we need to be to solve our problems. You know, in some cases, it's kind of literal. You know, it's like like plastic and and fuel and and a lot of these things, you know, the 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 uh, the we need renewable resources, and we need to stop using plastic. And that we can use hemp. I think that humans are lazy. I think that for the most part, people they think inside the box, and they they uh, are kind of like cloners. They don't think for themselves. So that's one of the reasons cannabis is so useful because if we can get everybody excited about cannabis and industrial hemp. You know, and there's two things. There's resinous cannabis, which is which has more THC and just a little bit of CBD, and so it has a psychoactive effect. And then, and then there's um, industrial hemp, which has a whole bunch of CBD and a little bit of THC. So the CBD counteracts the THC, and it doesn't get you. It doesn't have a, a psychoactive properties, so it can be used for paper and plastic and fuel and things like that. But really, just the whole plant altogether. You know, if we get excited about it, then just accidentally we'll be right really often. And um, and that's what people need because they're not going to do the research to always find the best option. And, um, and then it's just like throughout history, you know, cannabis is the original religion, the original tool for th therapy. You know, the first thera people doing therapy and therapists were herb smokers, the first artists, the first religious people, the first... You know, like every major breakthrough that's happened, the first medicines, the first doctors, the first architects, the first, you know, everything that, that man's ever done that's like a major breakthrough has been done by stoners, you know? And you see that in our society, like, like people that don't ever smoke cannabis or don't ever have those kind of experiences, they just, they're, they're, they're just very like obedient, you know, they're just like, oh, no, no, let's not do that. That wouldn't be prudent, you know, and they're just, um, it's like, what, prudent, like what, come on, you know, like, you, like, you, you know, like, let's not learn how to meditate. Let's not learn how to do this. You know, they don't, they don't want to learn how to meditate and, you know, like any magical, anything you do in magic, you notice like you, you research, how do you do this? How do you do that? It always starts with meditating. You always bring yourself into that state, you know, and to do anything, it's spiritual at all, you know, and, they, and it's like they want to just go right to the how do you do it and not, but not the, pardon me, the, the other stuff. So they're just kind of lazy. So if you just go straight to cannabis, you'll just do that. And then and then people can use it for the tool of knowledge and inspiration and everything like that. Uh, for me, I, to, to get where I am today, I, I owe a lot to cannabis. It taught me a lot. I've smoked an unusual amount of cannabis. I've been a heavy cannabis smoker since I was very young. For, and I'm like 49 and I started smoking when I was like 15. And, you know, except the four years I was Mormon, I've just I've been a heavy, heavy smoker. Smoked absolutely as much as I can get my hands on been stoned almost every day of my life it isn't until just the last um tra transitioning female has just kind of it matured me those last final steps that just made me not need those things i don't really drink anymore as I, I did a lot too much way too much drinking in my life and everything it's just i just kind of outgrown the need for those things and i'm really happy i'm happier than i've ever been right now i don't really feel like i need cannabis I don't, I don't smoke at all because I want, you know, the benefit of having jobs that pay more money and that are better jobs that drug test you, you know. And so I'm just, uh, you know, I will smoke again, but I don't really care when that is. I don't really care. I don't really, you know, it's just not, it's not necessary. It's not something that I'm worried about, you know. But um, I highly recommend everybody else smokes cannabis. You know, I want everybody to get stoned. Go get stoned Leave right now. Go buy some cannabis. Gosh, damn it. Go buy some cannabis and get stoned. And, and you have my full support. I want everybody to be stoned. Get stoned, smoke herb. I support it 100% from the bottom of my heart. It's a beautiful thing. Get stoned. Um, so, like... 
I believe, anyway, so I'm just adding that as my thoughts to the end of my playlist. You know, hopefully you've, you've looked at my playlist called Ganja. You know, like all through the Bible, it talks about the Lord coming in the clouds, you know. What, why did cannabis become illegal in the 1930s? Well, because Eile Selassie, I, you know, got his golden crown. And John, the character of his kingship, the second advent. And then the Rasta started smoking cannabis and he came in the, in the clouds. So like the rapture is not what happened. The rapture is a bunch of bullshit. The reason people believe, like in the Mormon church where I grew up, they have this painting of Jesus coming in a cloud and, and everybody goes up into the cloud, floats in the sky, and then everybody will know the Mormon church is true and all the others are evil and then there will finally be peace on the earth. That's uh, ridiculous. Those people just don't want to have to, they don't want to know the truth bad enough to notice that all through the Bible when the Lord comes in the cloud, it's in a cloud of incense. And, and it and they mysticize and, and, and everything. It's, it's cannabis, you guys. Okay, cannabis. And, um, you know, so that's the, that's the cloud the Lord comes in. But in Rasta, it's a, you know, it's, a, it's a, the conversion wheel, you know. See, like this thing right here. You know, it's it's how you convert to, to cannabis. It's how you convert to Rastafari. You know, the top of the thing says ganja. So you, you discover ganja, you know. It's, it's the conversion tool. You're all ganja, and when you smoke ganja. And then ganja takes you to a new religion. You know, it makes you aware. It teaches you all these things, and you realize new things, you know, and you learn new things, and it kind of, like, makes your old religion look obsolete. And then... You learn more about your old religion and you realize that you were just taught wrong about your old religion, that, that they were just manipulated, that the, the devil was manipulating you and everything. You know, which is kind of crazy. In this world, like there are people are all, I believe in the Bible. And it's like all, but yet you do everything that your government tells you to. Like, hello, the, the apocalypse, the book of revelations. Obviously, all the leaders and, every, and everybody is going to be, the, that's what Babylon is. It's not one person has many heads, many horns. It's all, it's everybody, you know, it's so like, how can you, obviously if they're saying don't do cannabis, maybe that's because you should use cannabis. Maybe there's some message you're going to learn there, you know? So you take that message, you find a new religion and it ends up just taking you to Eile Slossy and then, that, and then Eile Slossy just ends up taking you back to your old religion and then your old religion just takes you back to cannabis and the cannabis ends up taking you to your new religion, and your new religion just takes you to Ali Slossi, and then Ali Slossi ends up taking you back to your old religion, and it just kind of goes on and on and on, and, and you just keep accumulating knowledge and learning more and more things, you know. So, so everybody must get stoned.